during Shrig's podcast, he mentioned you a couple of times, but not really in a negative way. But he did say something like, oh, I, I really love uh, Reggie's mom. Do you know what he, I mean, did him and your mom have a relationship, like, like friends or whatever? Or <laughs> He probably only met my mom two times. Other than, you know, just being in the neighborhood when we were growing up or whatever. He was being, that's a, a, a subliminal threat that niggas throw at each other. Like, the only reason I ain't did nothing to you, motherfucker, is because I love your mama. I like your mama. <laughs> Me and your mom cool. I like it. And so I, I, that's how I took it. He need to get word to him if that ain't what you meant. Because if that's what you meant, then I got you. I hear you. But I'm going to sit back and listen and see how it goes, how the, this podcast go before I throw my daggers, because I got some daggers. I'll make him cringe. I have motherfuckers doing DNA around here and shit. I have some, I have some motherfuckers going to get some tests and shit, <laughs> and, and, and he knows it. Uh, and I'm talking about STD tests, the shit that stays with you. So, um, I'm going to sit back and wait before I throw my daggers. But uh, he mainly said that, and I get it. I, 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 I totally get it. I took it. You know, some would think it that way. Me with my little uh, gangster side in me, the little bit that I have, just a little bit. I took it as a, a threat because when I say something about a nigga mama, that's my way of telling you, nigga. <laughs> that's my way of really saying you remember the mama game when we was in high school or with kids when you say so, say something about a nigga mama, that meant let's fight. <laughs> you say something about somebody's mama, that was a fighting word. But so I took it that way initially, but then after I sat back and listened to it, and I listened to it, I think he was hurt and disappointed. And I totally agree with him. For me getting involved in that WAC 100 Suge Knight funeral situation, for me commenting on that, that hurt you. Because like he said, Reg, you know I could, could have got the money. You know I got jewelry. You know I got women. You know I got people that I could have won. And I totally agree with him. I totally agree. I know he would have made that happen. He could have called me. I would have gave him $5,000 on it. Uh, somehow, I know I could have got that somehow for him back then because y'all know I had just got popped and got in trouble. And so he's right. He could have got it from other people. And, but my whole thing on that is Wack is the one that did it. Wack made it happen where you didn't have to go and solicit it and call in other favors from other people. And so I was just, I saw the interview where Wack first heard of it and I saw the hurt in Wack face when he heard it for the first time that Suge had said that. When we released the audio of the conversation between him and the guy, a reputable Pyru from the uh, Fruit Town Pyru area. And it hurt Wack to the core. And so I, I put that out and said that trying to uh, Say, hey, man, don't do that to somebody that, that stepped in and helped you. Don't, don't do him like that. Where, thinking back on it now, those niggas had their own relationship. Red should have stayed out of it and, and, and let it go. And if Wack wanted to put that out and expose that, then he should have been the one to put it out. And so that's why I believe Suge Knight made that statement because I said something, exposed something that I probably shouldn't have spoke on, and it was concerning his mother, who I tell y'all all the time, Suge loved his mother more than anyone on the planet. Suge used to end his days, as I knew, remember, when I was around him, by talking to his mama at 2, 3 in the morning, talking to her, just checking in with her. And, uh, you know me, that's why I tell y'all the respect that I learned for Biggie Small was because of his relationship with his mama. Uh, and that's why I, I love dudes that, 
love their mama and give their mama the respect because you only got one mama. And um, yeah, mama's is your mama, man. So for those of y'all, I'll take this opportunity to make up, you know how I talk shit to keep y'all going, but I gotta throw learning lessons to y'all. If you don't have a relationship with your mama right now for whatever reason, man, go listen to that song. Any song, just type in, a, in something about talking about your mama and listen to those songs and then pick up the phone, call your mama and say, mama, let's work this out. Because um, that's one thing my daddy ever get mad at me when I'm calling myself upset or disappointed with my mama. Be like, nigga, you only got one mama. No. Don't you don't you be disrespectful or, or feel that way or say shit like that about your mama. You work that out. And uh, thank God me and my mama have a great relationship. And uh, I'll just employ any of y'all that don't have a relationship with your mother to try to get that relationship back. My preaching for the day, my preaching for the week, I promise I won't do no more preaching, y'all. But I think it's uh, important to have relationships with your mama. And that's where Suge was going with that. That's where Suge took that, like, red. Huh? Nigga, you know how me and my mama was. Me and my mama was like, you and your mama. Uh, get out of that. I hear you on that, big dog. And I respect you for that. And yeah, you won't hear me saying nothing else about that again. <laughs>